For this vodcast, we're looking at uh, some directions on the lab report for your yeast catalase lab. And so I just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of uh, navigation around the website and uh, what you can use to help you in completing your uh, final lab report. So we're in Unit 2, and so I've already clicked on Unit 2 here. We scroll down, we can see Unit 2 materials, all the stuff we've been working on, working on, working on. Now down near the bottom, your yeast catalase lab. This link will take you to the actual uh, document that I gave you with the instructions and the protocols that you're using to design your lab. And then I also have a couple of links underneath it. One of them, the Yeast Catalase Lab Report Checklist, is just that, a checklist of the things that I would expect to be in the lab report. Uh, first, I'm going to start at the link to the LabRite website. Uh, we are going to be using uh, this website as a uh, kind of year-long place to go get information about how to make a good lab report. It comes to us from uh, the University uh, uh, at North Carolina State, and uh, it is very uh, well used at the college level. What you'll see on here is uh, this is the post lab page. There is stuff that you can do on here for pre labs, uh, stuff in lab, but we're going to use it mostly for just you know what do we do with a lab report when the la when the lab is all done, the post lab stuff. You'll also notice a couple of different options on here on the types of labs. We are going to be using the self-guide mode, which you'll see over here, and over then here on the right-hand side, student designed lab report. So this link right here would take us to some instructions that would uh, guide us through how best to do a post lab for a student designed lab report. Before I go there, though, I want to show you there, they have some uh, kind of references over here on the side about what things to include in a lab report. The picture down over here sort of shows you basic um, display. Uh, there's a title and they have that lined up to number seven up here and they say do the title near the end right before you do the references. So the, the last things of the lab report should be title and references. The first and the last thing then on this picture are the two things they suggest doing near the very end. You will notice that uh, the actual lab report includes a couple of things here and here that I do not include in my checklist. Those two things are number six, an abstract, and number five, a conclusion. Uh, due to some redundancies in the reporting, I'm going to take those two things out and make your life just a little bit easier. So please do not include an abstract and a conclusion. We will include a title. We will include number three, an introduction. We will include number one on the list, a methods, or you might have called it a procedure in the past. We'll have number two here, the results. We will have number four, the discussion. Skipping five and six, the conclusion and abstract, we'll have then the title and the references. So they're just trying to show us that here's how we'd lay it out, but here's the order they're suggesting doing things in. Why do they suggest doing the methods first? Well, you've already done the lab. You should already know what your methods or your procedure was. This should be easy to knock out right away. Same thing with the results. You already collected the data. You may not have it perfectly presented yet, but you've already got the data collected, so why not knock that out right away as well? So the two things you've already done, they say take care of that business first. And then the stuff that'll take you a little bit more time, the introduction and the discussion, you can work on that next. I'm gonna click on the tab here now, Student Design Lab Report. And it takes me to now a lot of words. Here's the self-guide on how you can write your own lab report. Section one, the first thing that you're going to do, they suggest, but not necessarily the first thing in your lab report, is the methods. And so here they give a very brief description of the methods. Using the notes you took while performing your experiment and any other appropriate sources, like in our case, uh, maybe the, the sheet that I gave you, Describe in paragraph form the experimental procedures you followed. Be sure to include enough detail about the materials and methods you used so that someone else could repeat your experiment as you performed it. That should be old news, but the new news is the paragraph form. This is more of a narrative rather than step one, 
step two, step three. The expectation in a college level lab report is that this is written in paragraph form. If this isn't enough information for you, you can click on more help for methods. And now, oh my goodness, they give you all sorts of bulleted points on what you could do to have a better methods section. And so that's what I would be looking for you to do when writing a methods. Uh, look at some of these helpful hints in the more help section here in writing the methods section. Section two, the results, uh, it says making sense of your data. They have one, two, three, five steps to the results section. Holy cow. And in each one of them, there is more help, more help, more help. You probably have just in the past done a data table, and then you were done. This lab report is asking you to, to do a little bit more. It does say if you haven't already done so, put your lab data in a visual form by creating appropriate tables, graphs, and other figures. Representing your data in a visual form will allow you to identify trends and relationships among variables more easily. And then there is some help associated with this. Um, and I've opened up now the help for all the steps. They kind of come all at once. And so they talk about um, deciding if you have quantitative or qualitative data. Uh, do you have a table or a graph that you should do? Uh, and so on and so forth. Step two, once you have generated visual representations, decide the order. So step two is just pretty simply, how are you going to represent it and, and in what order? That might not take you very long at all. Then step three says review all the data from your experiment and in a sentence or two summarize the overall results of this lab. This is not giving your opinion, it is just a summary of what your data says. So do not start discussing at this point, but in a sentence or two, summarize all of your data. A big trend or pattern maybe that you saw, or if so, a lack of a trend or pattern. Uh, and then you can see step four and step five, just kind of take that a little bit further. If you have more visuals, um, putting them in the proper order and doing some of that stuff and making sure that you write a little something about each of the, the visuals, a graph and a table, so on and so forth. So most of us will worry mostly about steps one, two, and three, and step four and five are, you know, for probably some bigger labs, and we may not, not get into that in this lab. Section three, the introduction. This will, in your lab report, be right underneath your, uh, your title, and it says in three steps here, what do you do for an introduction? You're establishing a context for the lab. You are telling me what you know about the lab. In this case, you'll be describing some background information on what is an enzyme. How do enzymes work? What is catalase? How does catalase work? What is yeast catalase? How does yeast catalase work compared to maybe other types of catalase? Because you, as a human, you have catalase as well. So in this case, Set up the lab by giving some background on enzymes and catalase. They also ask you to talk about uh, in here uh, your research question. We might have called that your testable question based on your independent variable. You should present your hypothesis here as well, uh, telling me in an if-then because format what your hypothesis was. And then finally, it says in a sentence or two, briefly describe the experimental procedures you used. So very quickly, don't go through the whole setup, just kind of what you were doing, what you were changing, what data you were collecting very quickly in a sentence or two, just to summarize and make a transition from your introduction to your methods section where you explain your procedure. If you need more help with any of this, you click there and you get all sorts of helpful statements that may help you in writing a good, thorough introduction. I would expect this to be a couple paragraphs in length. You may also, in the introduction section, uh, find that you have outside research that you've included. Uh, you didn't know everything about enzymes and how catalase works, so you reference some of that. You cite some uh, other person's research. You uh, cite a website um, where you learned more about how enzymes function. Uh, quote that stuff, cite that stuff, and then include that in your reference page. I do expect you to have outside sources when writing your introduction, so please don't hesitate to do so. Uh, the last section that we're going to worry about would be section four on here, and that is the discussion section. So interpreting the results, 
I'm not going to say it's a conclusion. I don't want you just to draw a final conclusion. I want you to discuss what you did, how you did it, and what you found. So in a sentence or two it says, state whether or not the results from the lab procedures fully support your hypothesis, do not support your hypothesis, or um, do support it with certain exceptions. You should not be telling me anything about we proved because you did not prove anything in this lab. Your data either supports or doesn't. In a paragraph, identify the data. Don't tell me all the data again. Don't give me every detail again. I can see that in your uh, results section. But use the data to tell me about how it either supports or rejects your hypothesis. You can refer to some of those visual representations if need be. Again, in a paragraph or two, use your understanding of the scientific concept in this lab to try to explain what was going on. What do you know about enzymes, how they work, and why your results were the way they were. So make connections to how enzymes function here. Uh, they talk about restating the research question. Present the answer to your experiment as suggested. Show how the experiment has helped you solve the unknowns, the stuff that you weren't sure about, that you hypothesized but weren't sure if you were going to get uh, uh, an answer to or not. Uh, also, you might in this section, and I actually will greatly encourage it, in steps three and four, look to some other people's research. Go out, look a little bit online about yeast catalase, other catalase experiments and how enzymes work, and if you manipulated pH, well, find out what others say about manipulating pH and how enzymes work. Use that to enhance your discussion. You should also uh, discuss these items in step five as appropriate. You might say that possible sources of error stuff, sure, but that's the sources of uncertainty. What maybe didn't go as expected? Uh, how does it compare to here's other students in lab or other people's uh, research? You probably won't have the chance to talk to a lot of other students in lab, so maybe you could find some other people's research uh, online and see what they've found before. So I'd expect you to include some of that stuff here. And then, most importantly, suggestions for improving the lab. What could you have done differently? What would you do next time to make it work even better? Again, there's more help. We're skipping conclusion. We're skipping abstract. Make a nice title. There's some help on titles. There is some help also on how to do your citations and references making that page. How long does this have to be? I have no idea how long this is going to be. Uh, it really uh, depends quite a bit on uh, how detailed you get in the introduction and discussion sections. The checklist, if we open that up, uh, should open as a Word document. I'm not going to print them out for you, but you can see that uh, there is a list here. It goes pretty much right along with the big ideas from that lab right web page, and it talks about what should be in the introduction methods results. Now there's one thing here in the results section that is going to probably throw people off. And it says, you are expected to have a graph for your data, so that's expected. But also those other variables that I listed in the, the lab sheet that you did not test for, I'd like you to make some uh, additional graphs for those predicting the results in relation to um, changes in pH, changes in concentration of substrate of enzyme and substrate of, uh, or sorry, of uh, concentration of enzyme and concentration of substrate, as well as temperature. You probably picked one of those variables. Please create a graph showing that relationship of how those change as the variable changes uh, for the three additional variables. Um, so these will just be kind of hypotheses. I'd like them in that section just so you realize that there are other factors affecting how enzymes work other than just the one that you manipulated. Some of the virtual labs we've done in the past may help, but so um, will some of the um, other resources that are out there. And if you went back to uh, the main page, this uh, interactive exploration of the enzyme lab, does help a little bit with uh, recognizing some of those other variables and may help you in creating those graphs. Uh, there are also tools out there. This goes to a kid's website. Somebody found it a couple years ago on making graphs. You can use that to just plug in some pretend numbers, make a graph in the pattern or trend that you think will happen as you change pH, for example. What do you expect to happen? You certainly can go to some other sources to help you figure out how those might change. 
And lastly, Dropbox for this is right here. You can turn this in as a group or if you decide uh, to turn it in as an individual because you just don't have the time to work together as a group, you may do that as well.